Toast to Life podcast. We're doing a toast because it finally became a small business, a LLC. So, shout out to Dylan behind the camera. Stay tuned for this good episode. <laughs> Sorry on this episode. Grab your terra mana. Bam. God damn. damn. We're not sponsored by them. We're just trying to tell you that terra mana is some good tequila. A toast. Yeah, Here it is. Yes, sir. Tell me. We're good? All right. So this is another freaking episode in downtown LA with, honestly, a dude that is changing the game, changing the world. One, one day at a time, one step at a time, but we're back with the most authentic, most organic podcast, A Toast to Life podcast. Let's go. <laughs> for the people that don't know you and the people that know you, let, introduce yourself for, for everybody watching and tuning in right now at 7 in the morning. 7 in the morning. All right. Uh, my name is Alan Walters. I, I do a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Madam, a different talent. How, how long to this? How long to this airs? Ah, oh, this is gonna be. People are gonna watch this a week later from this one. Oh, a week later. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it's not. So yeah. So um, I guess right now I'm still a personal trainer. You know. I, okay. I, first and foremost, I'm a man of God. So there's that. There we go. Um, I do a lot of um, church stuff. I guess you could say. You know. So I do everything from uh, our church's content. You know, as far as like pictures, video, um, I run all of our social media accounts. Yeah. Um, I do have a heart for like my age group, ages 18 to 30. Um, so I do help lead our young adults um, at our church. And so I think I'm just, I do a lot. I do a lot. I help, you know, <laughs> the content um, for self-made. You know, even though I'm, by this point, people will probably know, but I put in my 30 days at the gym. Um, so I'm done training from, from oh, now on. Shit. Yeah. yeah, people will know by that, maybe. This is just yeah. a mic drop yeah, so, off the get-go. So, only yeah, like two minutes, not even news, two minutes in. Yeah, two minutes in. Yeah, so I'm done training. Um, but I will still be doing uh, a lot of the content for Self Made West Covina, Self Made Chino, and, uh, you know, Jason, who you said you're going to have here it's next soon. week. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Yes, sir. I got a lot of stuff that he wants me to do, you know, as far as, like, personal personal content. And so yeah. there's a lot of things in the, in the works behind the scenes, but... Um, I guess if I had to put myself as one person, um, I just do content creation, and yeah. I love my church and the people in it. So let, let first, and I want to take it slightly back. You said thirty days. Yeah, you're gonna give up that chapter of your life, but I don't think we can call it really giving up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just moving on into. I mean, I would think you're calling. Yeah, absolutely. Using your gift now for the greater good of the world and yeah. everybody else that has known you and is going to get to know you yeah. throughout this process. Yeah, yeah. So let's say even backer, training. Yeah. How did training come about in your life? How did that play into your life? Um, so growing up, I was an athlete. You know, I played multiple sports growing up. What uh, was your sport? My main sport was baseball. Okay, like, okay. Yeah, I played baseball in college. And, uh, uh, you know, I really thought my end-all, be-all was, like, maybe going to have to do something with baseball. And I told myself, okay, well, um, I had really good grades growing up. And so I'm like, okay, if I don't play baseball, uh, I'm going to use this um, platform or, or this knowledge that I've had in sports and either go, like, the pre-med route and do, you know, doctor school. My parents are super hard on me. So I was like, I'm like, yo, I have to go to medical school, you know? We'll get into that um, topic. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it was a little yeah. crazy. Um, but then I realized, you know, I got hurt. And so I'm like, okay, well... Mm. Uh, I had such a good mentor as far as um, personal training and I guess you would say rehabilitation uh, in okay. my process of coming back from being injured. And so yeah. I'm like, hey, maybe I want to help people. So I'm like, hey, I'm going to go to PT school, get my doctorate in physical therapy um, and help you know, other athletes who have been injured like myself um, get back to normal. So I really thought that's where my life was going to go at one point. This was what, high school going this into is, uh, college? Maybe this is... So I really thought I was going to go to like medical school when I was looking at colleges. So when mm. I applied, I'm like, hey, where has the best med programs? Like, where can I get in? But I was also trying to play baseball in college. So it's Tell like, me if I'm wrong, but when we're in high school and we know we're good at sports, our idea and mentality is, 
we're going to play professional. I'm going to the league. <laughs> I'm going to the league. I'm yeah. going to make it. Yeah. But realizing the statistics is like one yeah. out of yeah. a it's lot. Unreal. Yeah. It's a real big number. Yeah. But that transition, when you realize that maybe you weren't going to go to sports in college or yeah. play professional, how was that transition? Was it depression? Was it sad? Was it, you know, you okay with it? Like, what was through that that moment? Yeah. Um, I think when it came to sports, like I almost had my identity in mm. sports. Yeah. And so when all I could think about was like living and breathing and dying, like Did people baseball. really know you outside of the sport world? Um, what do you mean? Like when you're high school, you're an athlete, people know you. Did people know the Allen outside of baseball? Oh, there was no Allen outside of baseball other than a partier. It was like that. That was it. It was like I went to I went to school. I got good grades because I had to. It was it wasn't an option. It was like mandatory. Yeah. Um, and then you know I, I wouldn't like even senior year I didn't I was in danger of failing because I didn't go to class <laughs> unless it was a baseball game day. Jesus. You know. And so I had good grades because my teachers would allow me to turn my stuff in late. But I get to the point where the principal um, of my high school had to like call my parents and he's like, Yo, this kid doesn't come to class. You know, did your parents know that? Uh, they did. They did. Yeah, oh. my principal lived down the street from my house, so he knew my family really well. You know, the craziest part is his son now, who's like a freshman in high school, is in my youth group, who I help lead. So it's just crazy how like everything's turned. He's like, yeah, it's really crazy. Got to, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he told me like you're gonna have kids like you one day, and I didn't know it was gonna be his kid that was gonna be like me one day. That's uh, wild. Yeah, it was really how dope. the world just comes small world, back man. Around. Yeah. yeah. So getting into training, was it because you wanted? The challenge you wanted to be back in like competitiveness yeah was it that or was it a different type of calling coming in um so i guess kind of just like following like the track of like what we're talking about i think i was right the reason why so the reason why i pretty much stopped playing baseball is because i got hurt and right around the time that i had gotten injured uh my parents started to get like sick. Both the parents got cancer within like a year of each other. Mm. So it's like, okay, well now, you know, I have a little brother, I have a little sister, I have a household that's almost like counting on me. And like, yeah. I wanted to go back and like finish my degree because like I said, I was a good student. All I knew was like, you get your degree, you know, the typical, you get your degree, you school, then you go to school, you get job. your job, you get married, you have kids. Like that's, kids. that's how I thought it was gonna be. Absolutely, you know? Yeah. And so that's what I thought life was going to be for me. Um, and then once I had to like, kind of just like step up to the plate and be like, okay, well, you know, now we only have one income. Uh, we have this house. We have multiple siblings in this house. Like I just need to step up and like at, I'm thinking like 19 at this point, just be a man and, and go to work. And oh, so it's like, it's crazy. You know? Be a man. Yeah. Right? Like I think coming up at, during that age time, and we were just talking about this off of camera. And we'll, again, and I've said this earlier in the week that there's sometimes most, most of the great conversations don't just happen on camera, they have been outside of the yeah, camera. Yeah. So throughout that age group, when they tell you, I mean, coming from a Hispanic household, hey, you gotta go to work, you gotta pay bills. Yeah. You gotta stop, basically put your dreams aside, put your life aside, put whatever aspirations you ever had or thought about yeah. to the side and come take care of it. Yeah, no, that matters when it comes down to, you know, bills and stuff being paid. And you know, yeah. my mom, she came from Mexico and she was like, I don't know, 17, 18, she met yeah. my daddy, like a couple years later got, you know, knocked up, had me. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's like the, the generation that I, I mean, my mom brought that into, yeah. you know, it's a culture that I, right. I was born into, you know? Yeah, and yeah. so um, I think just seeing my dad just be like the guy who always wants to like work hard and it didn't matter like what life challenges he faced, he just always went to work, made it happen. And so seeing that, I'm like, okay, well, you know, even to this day, I don't really have like so much like advice to grasp on that my dad's like left me. I just see how hard this man still works to this day. And so at 19, I picked up, I picked up on that. I'm like, yo, my family needs me to go to work. And so that's kind of where the whole training thing started. Is like I, start, I, you know, I started working full-time at the gym that I worked at. Mm -hmm. um, started you know, trying to get my cert, the whole thing. And that's kind of how it all started as far as like training goes. Yeah. So you just mentioned there's not a lot that he, he told you that you can relate to. Think about, is there one phrase growing up that resent, like resonates in your back of your head. Uh, I don't think I don't think necessarily like a phrase. A phrase or even a word. But uh, <laughs> no, nah, there's not. I mean, n not in that way. I yeah. think there's just moments in my life where I remember looking at my dad and I'm like, damn, he really asked. Was me there to do somebody? That. Was there something that somebody told you in that, like that you remember through that that moment? Because um, I, I I honestly feel when now because I'm 26. How old are you? Uh, I just turned 25. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. We're in the same age group. We're yeah, good. Yeah. We're good. We're not old. We're yeah, young. Yeah, young souls. Again. Yeah. Um, now that we're in this age group, thinking back a little bit, like now we can look at life that was happening back then. Yeah. In a different, different lens, yeah. and a different view, because during those times we're just like tunnel vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing matters. It's my way or the highway. It's whatever it is. Whatever it is. Now looking back, it's like fuck. They used to tell me some shit. Yeah. Now. I'm living through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I got that early on. Like, um, I would, like, for example, I got into, like, the whole fitness wave before it was, like, everyone had a fitness Instagram. <laughs> and, and all those things. I just loved working out, and it's because I just yeah. had so much stuff bottled up all the time because I had to, like I said, step up to the plate and do things for everyone else. I've always, like, taken everyone else's so anxiety you, you put and yourself stress. Second? And, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. For, for sure for myself. Third, fourth, fifth. Yeah. Did and that come so, in effect? Yeah, 100%. Bite you in the ass at one point? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. And so realize, and then realizing that later on in life, I'm like, okay, well, uh, I never want to get to that point again. At some point, I have to start making decisions for myself. At some point, I have to put myself first, my wants, my desires, my needs, yeah. um, apart from what I feel has been called upon my life. You know, So once yeah. well, you put God first, after that, anything that I want, need, desire at this point in time, came yeah. now i'm getting married those her desires now become ahead of mine you know my you family desires yeah we get married in 12 weeks 12, 11 weeks 12 weeks yeah 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 stepping up for the culture you know yeah oh man i'm yeah. not gonna let my girlfriend see this oh uh, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. She's gonna give me some this is, stuff this is not dropping anymore <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can take a break. Don't worry. Uh, Cut that. <laughs> Dylan, can we bring the tequila? Dylan, can we bring the tequila in the bank, please? Because what you just said. <laughs> nah, I, that, that's honestly, one, a blessing, right? Yeah, that You were able to find someone. The way I say it, it's not that they found me. Not that I found them, they found me. Yeah. Like, you know, at one point, our lives just, I don't know, like, they say, like, if you put it out to the universe, yeah. it, it happens. Yeah. Were you asking to meet someone like this? Because there has to be, like, yeah. my, like I'm not trying to spark some flames or anything yeah, yeah. or some issues, but there has to be something that's happening in our lives that when you connect, like, you think about, like, fuck, this was, this was at the perfect time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did that come about? Um, at what point did you know, I, I want to marry this girl? Oh, first date. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. first date, yeah. Yeah, first day, I, I had to text my boys, and I'm like, yo, like... I'm done. Uh, yeah. Bring the, bring the bottle in the bank. Four or five. Yeah. Uh, first day, I was like, yo, I'm out the game. Like, uh, I had... Yeah, I wanted nothing to do with, like, <laughs> getting into a... No, you know, I was in a long-term relationship. Bad for me. Didn't want anything to do with, like, women, period. I'm like, yeah. yo, like, I just want to do my own thing. Yeah. But no, forget about it. Trauma. Not, I didn't even get the chance to even... It was that like, was it. Locked it up. How long have you guys been together? Uh, it's going to... Where are we at? Like, at least three and a half years. Three years. Three and a half years or so, yeah. Man, who yeah. are we? Send it done. Dylan's already here. Yes, you wasting no time, Dylan. Not too much. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Well, don't worry. We'll, I just said to bring the bottle, but you served it. Perfect. <laughs> you no, know, we're still out here trying to get more sponsors out here, so we got them. Phil's, um, Phil's Coffee. Phil's Coffee. If you want to sponsor me, uh, there it I'm is. I'm a pastor. We love coffee. <laughs> um, the alcohol part is mine. It's yeah. not even his. It's mine. Um, so yeah, we'll save for a, a relax today. We're relaxed, calm. Um, so going through your whole process, getting married. What's a gem that you would tell? Like again, you're talking to people in our age group, younger, and even some that are older. That when we think about marriage, it's like, nah, man, it's not for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We come out with the idea, nah, it's not for me. Yeah, yeah. Is there some sort of like words or advice that you would tell somebody that's, let me think, put it this way, that's afraid to love, to fall in love, coming from a, an older uh, breakup, ah, because this person broke my heart, I don't want to love anymore. Uh, I would first need to like ask like, what is your definition of love? Mm. Like who, who taught you what your definition of love is? Um, what is like what do you think love is cuz i think love is ultimately like sacrifice and uh obviously like i said i come from a christian background i think um god showed us what love is i think the ultimate 
act of love is God sacrificially sending his son to die on a cross. And I think if that is the ultimate act of love, if you can't die to yourself as a man to love your woman, to sacrifice your wants and your needs for your woman, then you'll never really have true love. Wow, that's, that's <laughs> deep, bro. That, I mean, that you is, asked, you asked. Yeah, yeah. no, no, and yeah, I yeah. love it. And I love it yeah. because you're giving your honest, honest uh, voice on it, your yeah. honest view on it. And the thing about this podcast is I tell everybody we have our own voice. Yeah. No matter what we say, it's us. Yeah, like, yeah. there's no editing, cutting certain things out because yeah. we don't want some. No, whatever we put out for the world to see, yeah. I am like this on and off, yeah, regardless yeah. of what it is. I'm sure this is who you are on camera, off camera. Yeah. Because if people haven't followed you or don't follow you, you lead the group. Yeah. You lead, like, when you stand on stage, what's the first feeling you get? Um, 30 seconds before you hop on stage, what's that? 30 seconds before? I feel like back to that old athlete who's like, in the tunnel ready to come out. Like, you know, when I warm it up in the bullpen, ready to go out there and like throw, yeah. throw, throw like pitch the <laughs> game. Um, I used to say I never get nervous. Like, I think I'd only been nervous um, our first date and then when I proposed to her. That's only, but now uh, I get nervous, which I think is a good thing. I think it's like, yeah. um, like it keeps me humble. Uh, so I said, you know, say, hey, I get nervous, you know, and you come, I'm like, good, like, you know, they'll keep you humble. You can't go out there and just be like, oh, I'm the best speaker in the world. You know, I think that nervousness um, allows me to keep me humble. I do struggle with like, uh, growing up, I did struggle with like pride mm. and like, you know, and okay. so I think again, coming more into my faith and realizing that like I'm doing God's work, not mine. Yeah. Um, and the platform that I'm on is because God wanted me there. I can't try and take the credit for it. And so, um, it's transitions, man. It's nervous. Like, yeah. Transitions to like how we once were when we were growing up to who we are now sitting here. Yeah. Like I tell everybody, it's like, and I've been telling my close friends, like, Five years ago, I was not this dude. Like, yeah. I had something in me. I knew it. Yeah, yeah, I was always, every time my mom wanted to go talk to the teachers, hey, your son's good, but he's talkative. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you want to do? These, these are my yeah, people. Yeah, like, yeah. I want to talk. Mm -hmm. But confidence, trying to fit in with everybody, trying Oof. to fit in with yeah. society, with, with social media. Yeah. It ran me down to where it's yeah. like, now I'm like, how we just talked about earlier. Like, yeah. I don't need to drive a better car than you. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to go to a better place than you. Yeah. I just know I'm doing what I want, when I want to do it, yeah. and I'm happy with it. So how someone that's struggling with, with something like that, uh, what, do you, what would we call it, identity? Um, yeah, or like just comparison culture. Com yeah, like what would you, some, somebody from your, somebody comes up to you and asks you for advice, like what would you tell them? Uh, in that regard? In that regard. Um, that comparison kills contentment and you'll never be content with what you have unless you stop comparing yourself to like the rest of the world. And so like, uh, I use this example. I had this, I talked, uh, I had this like sermon that I spoke on yeah. about like mental health and stuff like that. And so, because it is our generation ages 18 to 30, I did talk a lot about. Was this like the two weeks ago one? Um, this one was in December. Oh, okay. okay. So the sermon was on just mental health. And so what I did touch on was uh, comparing yourself to like other people. And that's kind of like what we do as like a generation. Like I won't be happy until I have blank. I'll never be um, excited for life until I have this. I'm going to continue nice. to be depressed until I've been given X, Y, and Z. And I'll never be able to fulfill my calling until I've been given this, that, or the other. And so I think that um, with that being said, you know, like I said, comparison will always kill your contentment. And I give the analogy. It's so funny because like, I'm super into the culture, but I try and like remove myself from it. So like, I love J. Cole, right? Best rapper alive, don't talk to me if you don't agree that he's not, but J. Cole is the best rapper alive, okay? Oh shit. And so- All the music uh, lovers are gonna tap in. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I, I didn't wanna hear it. I didn't wanna hear it. Like, don't even come in my comments, don't text me, don't DM me, no nothing. Um, but in his concert, uh, he, you know that song, Love Yours? Yeah. Okay, so he, he had this like little like five minute moment, like kind of talking about it before he like went on. And um, he pretty much said that, like, you know, growing up, he specifically um, fell into that, that idea of, like, the American dream. And he's like, what does that include? You know, the nicest car, the fattest crib, yeah. um, a whole lot of money, and a wife that's not even genetically possible. Yeah. Uh, and side pieces on top Ooh. of that. And so he said, and so what happens is, you know, there's people out there that are miserable who have it all. They have the car. They have the woman and multiple women. And they yeah. have the, everything you could possibly want, but they're miserable. Why? Because they don't have love in their home. So, would, so what you just said right now, it came really came to just mind. Yeah. 
And I feel that people that showboat, a lot of those things, especially in our age, they're missing something. Yeah, absolutely. How you just said, they're missing that genuine. Yeah. And not just the love part. Oh, we could keep it in that love scenario. But the people around them, the people that they sit at the table with, they don't embrace them. Yeah. They don't, like, if if tomorrow shit were to hit the fan. Yeah. Like, me asking you personally, if the people that are with you, not just today, but at your table. Yeah. They still love you? Absolutely. I love it. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. that's the theme that... I've been posting the last three weeks. I want to walk into a room when I'm loving, embraced, not tolerated. Yeah, absolutely. Like, think, think about this. When you walk into even a, a house party or a party, yeah. you're there with your boys, with girls, or whatever. Somebody walks in that maybe somebody doesn't like. What's the first thing everybody does? Turn around. Fuck, man. This yeah, here. yeah, they're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, yeah. they're here. Uh -huh. All right, we got to go. Mm. Oh, man, something's going to happen. Yeah. Like, why would people walk into that type of scenario? Yeah. Why would people be in that type of atmosphere when, yo, like, when you when they come up to you, you're still going to give them a big smile and a big hug. Mm -hmm. Hey, how are you? Long time no see. Yeah. And it's just like, now, unapologetically, if I don't like you, it's just, I'm going to tell you, hey, you know what? I'm just going to remove myself from the situation. Yeah. There's certain, uh, even as far, like, for myself, even as far as, some family parties that we that we've been invited to and I'm not gonna go. Yeah. Like that's I'm I have I have my son, I have my daughter, and I tell I have told my girlfriend, I'm not gonna have both of them in a scenario that I don't wanna be in. Yeah. I don't want them around people that I don't wanna be around. Mm -hmm. Why? Because now they reflect they're gonna reflect what who I was and who I am, how yeah. I carry myself. Why would I do that to them? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So I think our generation, our younger, um, same age and older, they have yet to find that genuine love. Like, yeah. have you ever, like, are you a hug person? Like, you get a big hug? Yeah, I'm a hug person. Yeah, I'm like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. And I'll give you a hug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know what a, a handshake is. Yeah, yeah. And one of, see, one of my favorite rappers is Kevin Gates. Okay. Yeah. So his thing is, when I hug you, I can feel the energy that you bring. Yeah. So when you get those little, and I always tell everybody, it's funny, and think about this. When you get those little side hugs, yeah. how much are they like, they grab you and they hold on to you? Yeah, or yeah. how about they just tap you? Yeah, yeah. The ones that grab you and hold you, they want to embrace you. Yeah. The ones that just barely tap you, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're just, eh, yeah, maybe yeah. they don't want to. Because they have to. They <laughs> have to. Yeah. Because it's cool. So transitioning, finding, leaving, now training. You're done with training. You're yeah. old. Not you're not over this. You're moving on to something bigger. Yes. How hard is to do that? To let go of something that's been a part of your life for uh, how many years already? I've been in like the fitness industry since I was like 18, 19. Yeah. So you're leaving something that you've been in six, seven years. Yeah. Moving on to something bigger. Yeah. A lot of us don't let go because we're so comfortable. Because we're so. Yeah. I don't know what this will bring. How do you? How did you transition into this? Um, how did you just say fuck it? I gotta do this. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't think I don't think it was my choice. I mm. think uh, giving you like I guess the context behind like how I ended up in this place. Yes, like please. I was killing it during COVID. I was like making more money than I could ever imagine. You know, being the 18, 19 year old kid who had to like stop going to school and had these like doctor dreams and all this kind of stuff. You know, right. athlete, pro athlete dreams, and then. It's like, okay, well, now I'm just, like, working and then working in the fitness industry, you know, and then, yeah. you know, crunch don't pay well, you know. And so then moving, I, yeah, that's where I started. Okay. And then cool. moving on to, like, somewhere, like, self-made um, yeah. and killing it there, you know, it was really cool to finally hit the moment of, like, but, like, we're talking about, like, I had all the things. I had yeah. all the You had a cushion external, under your boat with all that green. <laughs> yeah, something like that, you know. Um, yeah. So then, you know, I, I got comfortable and it was like cool and it was fine you know during covid when everyone was struggling like i don't want to be insensitive like i know it was a hard time for people but like it was probably like the best time for me financially like i training outside and bought my and, house and co during throughout that yeah that time. and, <laughs> people, and pe time. people just wanted to train and we we're like one of the only gyms that were open and so i was getting oh, inquiry, 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 inquiry 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 you know and so um i did really well and uh so i during, never really thought i was gonna leave your brother came on right yeah 
I, I saw that. You're yeah. like, got my little brother with me. Yeah. And I was like, hey, yeah, he's okay. In there now. Yeah. yeah. So I was able to, you know, pass down, you know, he got his own clientele, but like just pass down knowledge and like, you know, here's how you do it. And so even if, even if like, I'm like, okay, well this, I'm done with the fitness industry, uh, at least can't go back and say like it was a waste of time. Like I at least was able to pass down knowledge, clients and, and build a network. And so you can move on knowing you did everything yeah. that yeah, you yeah. knew you can do. So transitioning in, it was like, uh, Client would move. Client couldn't make it anymore. Client couldn't afford it. Client, and I'm like, wait a minute, like a client just starting to drop off. Like, doesn't make sense. Yeah. And uh, right around this time is when I'm like super involved in church too. So I'm like, okay, well, I can lose a couple clients because I don't have the capacity to be a fiance, a trainer, a content creator, um, a, pa a pastor, whatever you want to call it, right? All these things, I couldn't do them all at once. And so I'm like, okay, well, something's eventually gonna have to give. And it's not going to be her. So what is it going to be? And so when these clients started falling off, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, that's dope. I don't have to, like, tell my clients to, like, kick rocks. I don't have to uh, step away from serving at church. And so I could do all the things that I want to do. Um, and so then it was, like, another client, another client, another client. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, this is way too quick. And so right around the time where I was, like, um, comfortable-ish. Like, okay, well, I'm not yeah. struggling, but I'm not, like, making money. I'm not buying shoes every week like I was. I'm not going shopping every week like I was. Like, we're not eating expensive restaurant every single weekend like we were. And so um, I think that around that time is when my church like needed more help, more of my assistance with like the social media kind of stuff. And so I kind of just stepped in. After a few weeks, it's kind of like, hey, we actually are gonna let, let go of the person who's here. So would you like this job? And I'm like, oh, cool. Now an extra couple hundred-ish, thousand-ish, you know, some money, some extra, money, co extra yeah, money coming yeah. in. I'm like, cool, well, that's part-time. Like, I get to get paid for the things that I was going to do for, I was doing for free anyways. So, so yeah, that's so it was like for sure an answer prayer because I'm like, okay, I'm getting married. I, the extra money would be nice because, you know, I want to pay for this wedding. I want to yeah. do these things still. We had vacation Hawaii, Tulum, all these things planned. And I'm like, wait so a minute. So who's your content creator for the wedding? Um, Matt and Savvy. Matt, Matt, and, Matt Savvy and Jesse Saavedra, you know them? Not at all, but it sounds the like... Boys Jason? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, you're, if you're gonna... If you got them... I yeah, know they did our, our engagement photos. Ooh. So I don't know if you've seen those, but our engagement photos were cool. Uh, the, like the proposal photos on like The Rock, you know? Uh, the beautiful... Oh, they did cute, our, huh? Did you cry? Yeah, we did it. We like did it. <laughs> we kind of held it together at the moment. Cry? We both like choked up. And like... So she, she was like, I want to... Um, I want to like hear like the words you're saying to me because it's like a powerful moment. Mm -hmm. And then because she was not crying, it was it allowed me to like not really cry. Uh, but funny story is like, you know, we went to eat afterwards. We had that, um, knocked out, went to church in the morning and then I had a, I threw her like a surprise, like engagement party. So I yeah. took her to like the mall afterwards. We went shopping, came back, uh, had the party or whatever. And like, at this point it's been 24 hours and we still haven't spoken like about it. So like I pull in the living room, like, Hey, like, let's just go talk. And before we even like got a word out, we just both started like bawling <laughs> for like 30 minutes. Yeah. So like we didn't, in the, in the moment we held it all together, but like yeah. in 24 hours later, bro, it all came out. Yeah. So it was funny, but. Yeah, Anyways, give it up, bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> I'll give it up for myself. Oh, yeah, I cried. Where did I get twice a night? What were we talking about before, before the engagement? So, before the engagement, we were talking oh, about transition. transition. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then, right when that happened, um, right when that happened, it was like, uh, okay, I'm in this like, I'm not, I'm not going hard, but I'm at a steady pace. Like things are manageable. I was able yeah, to. Yeah, because you're, you're, you added something else. Yet you're. It's slowly slowing down yes. for you on this side. Yeah, and so I had to tell myself, okay, from this point forward, I'm not taking any more clients. Like, I'm done. Yeah. So now the curveball in all this is uh, I was going to move to Texas. So um, mm. the content creation stuff, one of my best friends, his name is Josh. His IG handle is The Fit Designer. He's like the most brilliant creative genius I've ever met in my entire life. And so he works for Seabum. He does all of his graphics, all of his stuff. Um, he does. No fucking way. Yeah, really. yeah. For real? Yeah. Um, 3D, 3D energy drink, Anaka Power, Dude, uh, Alpha Elite, and Dude, so that's fucking, what he does. Uh, his little, uh, what is it, like a two, three second clip of, of him, and then it says the most inspirational words part, whatever, every time on TikTok. Every time. Every time on TikTok. That's and that's when you know something powerful is <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve, man, he's That's what's crazy. Good, yeah. but so my friend works for, for them, and so there's opportunities like popping up, and um, I was like, okay, well... I don't know, maybe I do feel like I'm so good in Texas. I love it there. Uh, my best friend's there. Are you a um, Dallas fan? No, heck no. Oh, fuck. Never mind. Are you? Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, life's been rough for you the last year. I got my boots yeah. ready, baby. Yeah, no, no. I love Texas, but not that much, you know? Um, 
Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking like, okay, maybe I want to go. Um, I want to move. You know, it's a time for a new beginning. Yeah. I'm getting married. It's like a good transition time. Yeah. Um, and so I went out there a couple times. I explored it. Kind of had some like jobish opportunities, and it just. The day before I left to Texas, this random full-time position at church opened up, and they're like, hey, we want to offer this to you. Uh, I'm like, well, that's weird, because I didn't tell them I was going to Texas to look for jobs. I just said, hey, I'm going to go visit my friend. So that I go to wild. Texas. Everything yeah. that I wanted to like, kind of line up, yeah. I'm like, okay, if, I go, if I, I'm going, and I give myself an ultimatum that if I don't leave without like, a paper handed to me that said, sign this, yeah. I wasn't supposed to move. I even Jesus. compromised on that when I came back, and I'm like, no, no, maybe something's still going to happen. Like, you know, I didn't want to work full time at the church. I didn't want to do any of that. Um, Prayed about it, talked to like a lot of people about it. And I'm like, you know what? Like I gave myself an ultimatum. I prayed about it. I didn't get the actual answer that I wanted. Um, Time's ticking. I'm running out of patience. I'm running out of time. I'm running out of money, you know, like, and I have this opportunity and I I prayed for something bigger and it's like, it just didn't come in the form that I wanted. So maybe I'm supposed to stay here. And so um, as soon as, as soon as I told the church, yes, I hadn't even told my friend Josh that I'd said yes yet. He texted me with an hour saying, hey, actually, they're going to go a different direction. Hey, actually, this other brand decided to hire somebody else. Hey, this brand decided to do this. Within like a three, four-day period, I got different news from all these different brands that decided to go a different direction what they were doing. And I'm like, dude, as soon as I said yes to the church, all the other doors closed. Boom, boom, boom. And it was like almost like God dangled like this money of like this huge amount of money in front of me. And it's like, do you want this or do you want to fulfill your purpose in your life? Like, do you want money or do you want like this this ultimate purpose that I have for you. That's fucking yeah. Crazy. And so without it was either without it wasn't even my choice. I mean it was it was my choice, but whether I liked it or not, this was the road I was gonna go down. He just allowed it so for me to go down that road. Is it things happen for a reason? Do you stick by that? Yeah, absolutely. The power above, that's the plan. Like I said it last week and it's something that I've always like stuck with. Yeah. That the book of our life has already been written. We're just living through the chapters. So we may not agree with a lot of shit that may happen to our life. Yeah. We may not agree of certain events or people that come in and out of our life, but we're supposed to be here. We're supposed to be doing this in our life, and this is our our calling. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Like, do you agree that because all that, everything else, like, you, were, it was going to happen regardless of whether you liked it or not? Yes, uh, I agree with like 95% of it. I would say that like, I wouldn't say, I don't know. Like, so if any like super Christian people are going to watch this, this is the getting into like this topic of like predestination mm-hmm. and it's like a completely like crazy like Christian topic. <laughs> so I'm going to say 95%. Okay. Um, but I would, I would say that God already knew what you were going to do before you did it. And so uh, if I decided to go this route and he's yeah. like, no, you're supposed to be here. And I and yeah. then like, so he'll redirect me. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I still want to go this way. Yeah. And but no, he's gonna redirect me. And so like I feel like at the end of my life, like the end all be all, God already knew I was gonna say no to this decision, mm. but I decided to go this way anyway. So it's just like little like stepping stones. I feel like there's like growth in your life. There's there's he knew you were gonna say no, but he also was one step ahead of that as well. Yeah. And so like me sitting down and talking with you right here was already designed to happen. It was just to answer your question. Yeah, it was because yeah. I, I remember I think it started because of TikTok. How yeah. we came about, yeah, bit. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I got your message. I was just like, I've always watched this one. What the fuck? Like, yeah. why? How is he hitting me up? Or yeah. how is like, how did that even come about? Yeah. And because your stuff was dope, I, I liked it. I, I appreciated, appreciated it. it. Yeah. And anytime someone does something like this, where they take like the faith to go out and like do what they feel they're supposed to do, yeah, uh, I just respect it. You know, it, whatever. It, it's so. It's something that. In our position right now. We know we're destined for something great, yeah. and it's going to happen yeah. at the right time, whenever it's supposed to. Mm. But we're just not giving up, even if the tables are turned. Yeah. Like, today we had an inconvenience of me, myself, forgetting something. I said, fuck, man. I was telling Dylan, I was like, damn, bro, I'm yeah. stressing. I, I don't know how this is going to go. Mm. And I'm just like, shit, it's the way it's supposed to. Yeah. This is supposed to happen. Yeah. Because I tell everybody, like, yo, like, if you can control it, cool, and if you can't, it is what it is. Yeah, go yeah, with it. Hundred percent. Yeah. Just go with it. So, and I was talking uh, with our other friend Aubrey. I'm like, dude, when I wake up, it's just people think you wake up and you're just like, hell yeah, let's rock it. Yeah. Sometimes it's a little tough to get up. Yeah, man. And then you start remembering why you're doing it. Mm-hmm. You remember your why. Yeah. What's your why? Her. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, yeah. Damn. 
Why is that? Um, well, I guess technically, to go way, way back, and you ask me a question like, hey, when you're going through all that, is there like a phrase or like something that you heard? Yeah. Um, I heard, in order to get your biggest blessings in life, you have to leave what's comfortable. Mm. And in that moment of life, like I was extremely comfortable with everything. I wasn't happy, but I was comfortable. And I feel like so often, us as people are, are so accustomed to staying in like that comfort zone because we're scared to see like what's out there. And we don't want to go out and venture off and see like, you know, what's good with the world. Cause you know, I know what, I don't know what it's anxious it's feelings or, or, for, or, you know. I mean, for the people sitting here, like, I don't know if we can all agree. Like, is it, it's scary for, to get out of, to get out of a sure thing, to get into something that you have no idea what the return is. Yeah. And it can be in jobs, it can be in relationships. Like, if we go, so we're talking about relationships, it could be to someone having, being something toxic. Yeah. I don't, ah, he's going to change, she's going to change, it's all right. Yeah. Cheat on me once, twice, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It, oh, cool. it, We're in love each other, yeah. it's going to work. Yeah. It's like, now when you talk to them after they surpassed it at their own time. Yeah. Man, it was the best decision I've ever made. Yeah. I'm finding myself, and that's the power of TikTok. Mm. Power, like literally, uh, shout out to uh, the two people that reached out this week randomly. And I saw them in, in the hidden messages, and they're like, "Dude, advice on leaving a five-year relationship when caught her red-handed and she laughed in my face." <sighs> right? I was like. Like, dude, how did how does this come about? Like, yeah. you're asking us. Yeah, I was like, yo, like, you gotta do it for you. Yeah, you gotta do it for First you. First of all, why are you even asking? You know what to do. Yeah, you know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but good. It's good that they're coming to you for that. Yeah, yeah. it shows that you're doing and your then thing. The other one, I was at the gym. I'm just like going through a workout. Finally, Jose got here as always late, but my boy Jose, uh, Jose? is here, trainer. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> So I was doing his three-hour program, like, at night at night, uh -huh. going through my training, uh -huh. and I just get a message, and this guy was like, bro, ordered a shirt. He was like, dude, I just want to say thank you. I ran through your videos through TikTok, and it was at the most random but most perfect moment that he was going through depression for the first time in his life, and he ran into our videos. He was like, dude, since then, I, start, I subscribe, I watched. So I just want to let you know you have support from the Bay Area. Hey. I'm like, yeah, that's what's what up. The fuck? Yeah, like this is really. I texted him right away. I sent it to him. Yeah, I'm like, bro, look at this. This yeah. is really just happening. So, have you ever, in the last two three weeks, um, this is LA for you? Yeah, is that, it's this loud. Is, it's this is good. straight out. <laughs> you don't believe we're in LA. We're in LA. Um, <laughs> no, Cyrus here. I know <laughs> Siren's coming up right now. <laughs> um, have you ever sat back, taken a moment for yourself, and seen everything you've done? Up until right now. Have, in the famous phrase that I didn't come up with, I just took it, giving yourself the flowers. Um, I don't think I allow myself to at this point. Like, I really feel like I haven't really done anything. Has he done something? <laughs> right? I got to put him on the spot. Do you think he has done something, is doing something right now in this platform? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think I'm doing it. I don't feel like I've really done anything. I mean, but, okay, I would say, okay, I'll answer your question. Right. I don't think I allow myself to, but um, one, of my, one of the pastors who I serve with on, you know, on staff at church, he's like my mentor, like the first guy who I looked up to, and I'm like, dang, yeah. like going to church, I'm like, yo, that guy's super cool. Yeah. And it, I mean, I guess I could see myself doing it because he does it and he makes it look cool, right? And so now we, fortunately, five, six years down the road since I've been there, he he like mentors me. He allows me to do whatever I want, and I mean, within reason of like, hey, like make this decision, do this risk. Yeah. He encourages me, and he's like, I'm gonna be behind you no matter what decision you make. And so, um, he pulled me aside. Same thing. It's so funny because he didn't know I was going to Texas yet. It was like that same week where I was gonna leave, yeah. and we had our young adults that we we. Um, meet once a month uh, on the Tuesdays at 630 plug and um, he pulled me aside and he's like hey like look at what you've created like because I had the reason why I started is I had this like impression on my heart like 
there's no place ages 18 to 30. Kind of like you talked about, like, you know, yeah. if, you're, if you're a church kid, you grew up, you go, you go to the kids, and then you grow up and you go to youth group, you're middle school, high school, and then boom, out into the real world. And, like, statistics show that, like, once you graduate from high school, like, it's like I don't know if it's, I'm, I might butcher it, but it's, like, 70-something percent of people who grew up in the church, once they hit, like, college or they graduate from high school, um, kind of walk away from their faith. Or at least, and then there's even, there's just another statistic that after that, yeah. After they get married, have kids, they realize, oh, I need to come back. So I don't know exactly what the statistic is, but I just know it's not good. And yeah. I'm like, you know, coming for myself or like at that age gap, I needed someone, something. Yeah. And, you know, I've been through it and now having a brother who's in that same time of age. And I'm like, yo, like I said, I can't go back and change my life. But what I can do is prevent other people from going down that road. Yeah. And so during the young adults, he pulled me back and he's like, yo, like, look at, look at what you did. Like you said yes to something. Like, you, you came up to me and said, hey, I think we need to do something about this age demographic. It's been seven, eight, nine months, almost a year now. And, like, there's 300, couple hundred people in this room yeah. all worshiping the same God in the same room with the same purpose yeah. for the same reason, all because you said yes to something. Now look at all the lives that are being changed. And so That's... I guess to say I have done something, you know, but I don't want to even take all the credit for it. You know, I, don't, I think I'm just doing it. I think it. the biggest thing is you're at least trying. You're yeah. doing something that, you know, again, it goes back to like even the podcasting. And there's a lot of people that are trying podcasts, want to yeah. try podcasts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, one day I want, it's like, yo, but what's preventing you? What's preventing you from really doing what you really want to do? Yeah. And it's going, again, going back to that unknown area. Yeah. I don't, it's because time, energy, money, yeah. this, this, all these external things. Yeah. And it goes back to the same thing. Yo, can you change it? Yeah. Can you take control of it and, and change the outcome of what's going to happen? Yeah. Cool. If you can, boss to the Dope. wall. Yeah. Go over it. Yeah, yeah. But if you, <laughs> right? Yeah. But if you can't, what are you worrying about? Yeah. And it, you know, now you're in this new journey. Gave 30 days. You're going to get married. Like, on a, we haven't done this in a while, honestly. On a scale of 1 to 10, how, like, mentally... Emotionally, physically, financially, like ten being best, you don't need shit. One being fuck, like you need some help. Uh, a ten. I'm content, bro. Like everything's good. Like I have people around me that love me. Uh, maybe I mean I guess financially I'm not exactly where I want to be, but I'm I have enough. You know I think putting in perspective of like, okay, am I really broke or do I just like have expenses? Yeah. You know I'm not. And so um, obviously like it's a natural desire of like human to like always want more yeah um and so like but if i really like humble myself back to like real life you know i'm like yeah people will search up and down and like would die for the kind of relationship that i have um it's cocky but i i mean it um my friends and family around me like my friends would do absolutely anything for me whenever 3 a.m call them i can always count on them to be there for me hey i need something they do it right away um you know, I, I'm doing what I feel like I'm set out to do, what I'm called yeah. to do, so I can't even question that. Yeah. Um, you know, we're all, again, we're always going to think the grass is greener somewhere else, but like the phrase goes, like, it's only green where you water it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. When you really invest your time, your energy, yeah. put your love in. Yeah. 10 out of 10. No question. Yeah. It's good. Fuck, I'm going to take a shot for that one. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was good. Yeah. So if you're watching this, again, you got to subscribe. You got to follow all the platforms that we have on the pages, yeah. right? Everything, so we're not ending, but where are we at, dude? We're at 15 and a half. Exactly. All right, I'm gonna bring something up. Yeah. Curveball. Yeah, go for it. She said earlier, I didn't meet him this way. Yeah. Let's talk about the old Adam. How did she? How did? How did she meet you? Uh, she, she was like, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think there's no shame in there's no shame in the transformation, you know. Never. Um, I think that's we just are the, who we are. Yeah, 100. percent I think it's just the power of like the. Like, the testimony, I feel like, you know, there's the kids who were, I mean, I was raised in and out of church. Like, I would go, but I didn't, like, go. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and so, I think there's a difference between going and then going. And, like, I told Dylan uh, where he lives at, <laughs> there's a church by him. I was like, damn, don't you remember? After church, those nachos were smashed. Yeah, yeah. Not the, church, the little church memories. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, would, you didn't even think about the church. just like, yo, the nachos the after nachos was hit, though. Smashed. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean... Again, that was just like a random thought, but you know, and that age group, like how yeah. you, you said, like we don't in and out. We didn't really, yeah. we weren't really there. There, we're present. Yeah, we weren't really there. Yeah. So I think the power in that is 
I've, I've done it all. Like anything you could think of bad, done it all. I think now that what that does is, like I said, I can't go back and change it because I wish I maybe would have never. But at the same time, like now I'm much more relatable to the people who have been so far from God and I'm able to like help bring them near, you know? Yeah. So um, the transformation, I guess you can say, like she didn't meet me necessarily this way. But the thing is also like in 10 years, she's not gonna even know who I am now. Like I'm gonna be hopefully a dad, you know? I'm gonna be a husband. And so she's gonna like learn to love me in a different way yeah. or learn to get to know me in a different way. I don't even know myself yet in that mm. way, you know what I'm saying? So I think we're just constantly growing. And if she were to, I think the issue would be if it was three, you know, three and a half years from now and she said, oh, he's exactly the same. That would be the problem. I think he, she should be saying I didn't meet him this way. So you think people should change every year? I don't want to say should because, I, you know, who am I to tell people? But I think if you're not constantly, like, growing or evolving or doing something, yeah. I think there's, there's an issue there. There was a Mayweather phrase in one of his uh, documentaries. If a week, a month, days, year passes and I'm still the same, I wasted time. Yeah, I agree. You know, uh, Cat Williams? Yeah. Okay, so, you know, like I said, I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm in the culture, <laughs> but I try not to be it. But he said if... If you've been selling uh, weed for 10 years and you ain't moved up to cocaine yet, <laughs> uh, I'm in the wrong place, you know? <laughs> he said something like that, you know? He's like, if it's been 10 years and you haven't moved up to cocaine yet, like, I'm not messing with you, though. You're in the same spot as you were, you know? So yeah. to bring a little culture into it, I, I think, like, you know, I think we do need to progress and we do need to grow, you know? Maybe not. <laughs> maybe not on the corner selling, yeah. selling it, but, you know, the analogy's there. Yeah. You, know, you get the gist of it. So now the people that tune in and have relationships, now, because she's here, and maybe her facial expression will say different. Yeah. Is there a compromise that you got to make? Yeah. Is there things the that you saw that this is what you wanted? She came into your life. You guys came into each other's lives. She wanted something different. Was there a compromise, or did you stick to your guns? Did someone um, give up something? Like, how is that, that um, balance in a relationship? Yeah. I think kind of like what I talked about earlier is, like, you know, the the sacrificial. Um, I think she's a whole lot better at that than I am, especially at the beginning. I was like, what the heck? Like, uh, I'm the guy. Um, what I say goes. Um, I'm a very, like, I can be stubborn. You know, yeah. I think over time I've, like, softened that or she's softened that. Yeah. And um, so I think, you know, it's compromised every day from, like, the little things of, like, uh, where do you want to eat? You know, those little things, you know, you've always been beefing with your girl over where you want to go. What do you want? Yeah. Yeah. Anything? And then it's like, well, this. Oh, no, not that, though. No, not you know? that. Yeah, yeah. So things uh, like that. Go anywhere. Do you want to go? Anywhere? No, I don't. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, compromise is there. Um, but I think, like, you know, no relationship is perfect. And then when you get into, like, the nitty gritty of, like, dang, like, I was probably wrong here. Or even if I wasn't, I'm just going to go ahead and say I'm sorry for, like, dude, I'm not, I'm sorry person. Yeah. I'm not. I, even to this day, like, I've learned to be only because, like, okay, I don't want it to affect, like, later on. I don't want to create, like, that habit, that habit, the pattern that people get into in their relationships. It, it, but it, as even high school, throwing out on stories yeah. got played out. It might be. Yeah. Meaning, like, if you're in an issue with your, with your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is, if you're watching this, remember those times when they yeah. would fuck up? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm never going to do this again. Yeah. Bam. Do it again. <laughs> do it again. Yeah. I just think that when you say it, I'm sorry, is this for the satisfaction of the other person to hear it? Yeah. But there's no really no mean behind it. Yeah. Like, I think if you're going to say, I'm sorry, it really has to, one, just come from you alone. Yeah. Compared to someone telling you to say sorry. Yeah. You know? And I think, I mean, relationships, is just, it's a work in progress, right? Yeah. Like, what would be the key... Key advice for someone in a relationship. When one when, key, or one key uh, for one. Like uh, let's say meeting a new meeting in quote in quotations the one when you feel like this is the one. Are you talking like okay? Let me because it depends on the person. Go Are you it. asking me like because. At church, people ask me this question, and yeah. my answer at church is different than my answer like in the real world. So like or in the real world, but. In, outside of church. Outside of church, I would say um, you have to create like your standards, and I feel like so pe people are now are so ashamed to be like, oh well, I only, I only want this. I mean, it's not, it had to be realistic. Like you know, you want six six NFL. Well, you know, it's like you know, now you're being ridiculous. <laughs> but you know, have those things that like your your non negotiables. Like hey, I don't do you know yelling when we argue in a relationship. You yeah. know, and I don't do these things. So as you progress in your relationship, it's like hey, 
you bring it up, and if it does, if it continues to happen, like just walk away. You know, like I think even first couple dates, like you get to know them, yeah. and I think instinctually, like you know, do I want to continue to get to know this person or not? Yeah. And a lot of times, people are like, well, he has a status, or he looks this way, or he's super handsome, and so these girls they continue to go on these dates, and then it's like, hey, you had the red flags there, but you just decided to bypass them. Yeah. Um, so I would say like, a lot of the times your intuition's right, but we ignore it. And so if you're starting to get to know somebody. Um, there's that now. If I'm in the church, the again advice that's been passed down to me is pretty much um, one: do they love Jesus? If they don't. You have no business being in a relationship that doesn't have the same values as you, who doesn't mm. see. Because again, the reason why I think our relationship works so well is because we both have the same idea of what love is. And you, you have, might have one idea, and you know she may have one idea. But if you can't come to terms on that, you're never going to agree on anything. Your relationship's never going to work. Um, and then the, number two is: do they make you more like Jesus and if they don't then you're really wasting your time either because you know you can find a girl that says she loves Jesus but if she's not making you a better person I guess you can take that out of like even church too like yeah. if the person you're with doesn't make you a better person you have no business being with them because being with her I'm like okay like she said I didn't meet you this way but like because of her I wanted to become better and if you can't become better in your relationship for yourself you can't be better for her you know so yeah damn <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. honestly, um, w everything you just said, everything, all the knowledge, all the views, advice, and to me, I call it advice because it's something that you went, how you said, that you went through yeah. and you're just here passing it on. Yeah, yeah. You're the voice for, and I said it earlier, um, earlier in the week, you're, we're becoming a voice for the people that are silent. Yeah, absolutely. We're becoming a voice for the people that can't and don't want to speak up yeah so it's like it's again it's like social media because we hear it from somebody else yeah. doesn't mean we didn't know this uh -huh. it just means they said it and we just thought about it yeah so we're bringing everybody's thoughts into what somebody is saying now like we're now this person said the words yeah now he said it now she said it now we're just we're living we're how do i call it we're literally living testimonies yeah for what what life is uh -huh. What do you think life is? This life? I think. Right now. I think Outside the, of the church, big boy. No, I, I mean, my, my life revolves around that. You yeah, know? yeah. So I think, like, I mean, sometimes I can, like, compartmentalize, but, like, a lot of times I think this church is really just uh, temporary. I think, you know, because I do believe in God and I do believe in, like, what the Bible says, I think this is just, like, I don't want to, like, minimalize it, but I think this is just, like, a playground and it's chill, but, like, real life is in heaven. So. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it's cool. I mean, uh, that's why it's like, yeah. I don't say it's easy to like learn how to compromise and it's easy to learn how to love somebody and it's easy to learn how to navigate their life and it's easy to, you know, snap my mental health back into order because I'm like, I just remember that like all this is temporary yeah. and I'm in full control of what I'm in control of and I'm, what I'm not is probably because God has his hand over the thing that I think I'm in control of, but I'm not. Facts. Yeah. I think, I think it's just, it's, they always say the two things that you don't talk about anywhere in public is religion and politics, right? Because yeah. there's a whole big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But literally on the way here in my head, I'm like, yes, it's a, it's a red flag, right? Because we don't know what the other person will say. Yeah. But I think when you have two people that are understanding and mature can have a big conversation. Yeah, 100%. You know, I know I walked out of a situation, not even a situation, a scenario where we had different views. And when we ended, hey, bro, I still love you. Yeah, appreciate yeah. the conversation yeah. and like nah yeah but what do you what do you want? I'm like because usually a lot of people cannot yeah. withhold withstand a big conversation yeah. that has a lot of emotion that has a like this is you know technically still like being sober being very like early in the day having a big conversation that other people and again we started this podcast having the making the uncomfortable conversations comfortable yeah like, whatever you wanted to ever talk about, no one could talk about it, we're talking about it here. Yeah. We're doing it here. Why? Because this is a platform. Yeah. This is a place where it's just you. Mm. It's, not, it's not scripted. You mm. didn't walk in here and be like, yo, I'm going to ask you these questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happen. It's like, I tell everybody, like, yo, we're going to walk in. I got no idea. See what happens. <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> yeah. see, see what yeah. way we flow. See what way we go. Mm. And, that, and from wherever it goes, that's just what it was supposed to be. Yeah. Because the people watching, the people tuning in, listening on either Apple, Spotify, or watching it on YouTube, like they're just listening right now in their car like, damn, 
Might have turned out by now. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> hell no. I, if they're listening to you, definitely yeah. not tuning in. Like, still tuning yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Where we at right now? 26. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Yes? No, hold on. So, hold on, my big guy. Hold on, big guy. For the people watching. Yeah. Before we end this and everybody subscribes, and I hope you already did, what would be a piece of advice that you would give them, like, if they're struggling right now, they're battling something, battling their demons, and there's not enough light in their, in their life right now? Practical advice? Like, one thing you could do right now? Right now. Like, uh, they're struggling. Just find the thing that brings you joy and just do that. It's really, like, simple. I mean, again, I can, I can give you, like, some, like, <laughs> preachy biblical advice, but I, yeah. I think when it just comes down to, like, the, the general person, it's, like, I think, um, right, like, when I was going through, like, my worst time in life, the one thing that was always there for me was the gym, and it sounds shallow, but, like, I needed the hour. I needed an hour and a half, and, and those things can become superficial. Like, okay, well, like, do I look good? Do I, you know? But at the end of the day, like, uh, I'll always work out no matter what, regardless if I'm a trainer or not, because that hour, hour and a half is like therapy to me. It's my happy place. It, it, it brings me joy. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, no matter what, like hard time, good time, bad time, whatever, like the gym's always been there for me and I've always taken that with me there. And so um, for some people it could be drawing, for some people it could be painting, for some people it could be writing music, for some people it could be walking your dog, like yeah. whatever that thing is that brings you like real life contentment, uh, literally do that. You know, and it sounds like very like again shallow, but uh, without getting too into <laughs> it, you know, I think really yeah. just like find the thing that makes you happy, and run with it. And run with it. Yeah. Damn, that's so good. Hold on, I'm gonna pull myself one more. <laughs> um, that what? Uh, it says my trainer that. Oh man, Jesus! You still have one poured up. You got your coffee, but if you're tuning in this much. And if you stay tuned in after this long, yeah. right? We're almost at an hour. Um, I hope whatever we said right now helps anybody listening. Yeah. In some sort of way, good or bad. Yeah. And if you don't like us, hopefully it changes not to be like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you love us, hopefully it yeah, Start your own podcast if you don't like us then and see if you can do it better. How about that? Exactly. So with that, grab your, if it's early in the morning listening to this, grab your coffee, grab your soda, whatever you're drinking. Pour it up. I'll take a shot with you on camera. I don't care. I don't think the church will hate me. <laughs> hey, toast, man. Cheers. I appreciate you guys.